Hi, this is Robert Flahi Paramotors.com. Today I'm going to walk you through how to replace a clutch on an Air Conception 280. So I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. It's not that hard, and um, I'll walk you right through it. So let's just talk about the clutch paramotor. There's a lot of talk of, out there if you should have one or if you should get a paramotor without a clutch. I always say get a paramotor with a clutch. The benefits far outweigh the the drawbacks of having a clutch. Yes, sometimes the clutch might break, but they're pretty rare to break. Okay, and the benefits uh, outweigh outweigh it so much more than not having it. As an instructor and training people uh, all the time on paramotors, I can tell you for a fact, just from my experience, how many times having a clutch on a paramotor has saved us from breaking a prop, chewing up uh, glider lines, chewing up gliders. Uh, there's so many instances where a new pilot is learning learning the sport and literally the glider falls on them, for example, and they didn't kill the motor. Um, or they fall backwards or they fall so or, or they'll fall to the side. And again, they don't kill the motor in time. The motor is still on. And if that actually happened with a spinning a, a motor that's on that doesn't have a clutch and it's spinning, it would have chewed up the glider when it fell on them. It would have broke the prop when they fell over. So the the benefits of having a clutch is so wide. Even even um, when the motor is just basically idling, with a clutch, a motor idles more smoothly. Okay, a great example is like the Viterazzi 185. Before the Viterazzi 185 actually had a clutch. I used to call the Viterazzi 185 the Harley Davidson of paramotors because it would rattle like this. It would go, it would, it would look like Harley Davidson idling, okay? And so when you had it on your back and that, and that prop is spinning without the clutch, it was just idling your brains out. And in flight too, when you were off the power, it was idling so rough, so, so rough. And it still does it without the clutch. But now with the clutch, it runs so much smoother. So what the, what the clutch actually does when you have the motor on, on idling, the motor is much more smoother when it idles. So when you're flying around and you let off the gas, it's just, it's just quiet, it's, it's not vibrating your teeth apart. So there's so much more benefits to having the clutch than not having clutch. I, I highly, highly advise you, don't listen to people um, that, that I don't know, you know, they just seem like they don't know what they're doing or just perspective is totally off. There is no reason not to get a clutch, okay? Um, it makes no difference if I sell a motor with a clutch or without a clutch. So that doesn't matter. But having a clutch just saves you, especially as a new pilot. If you, you, you will fall over, you will fall down, a wing can fall on you. You're making typical newbie mistakes. Having the clutch over there, uh, will help you to not break props, not chew up gliders and glider lines. So, so much benefits of having a clutch. So, I hope you understand that a little more clear why having a clutch is a great idea. So, now I'm going to go into and show you how to fix, how to replace a clutch if you ever need to replace a clutch. Keep in mind, Air Conception comes with a two year warranty, industry leading. So, if there is a problem with your clutch, it's covered for the next two years. Okay, to remove the propeller, you need a five millimeter Allen key, and that's what we're gonna use to remove the prop bolts. Okay, so step two is we're gonna have to re uh, loosen these uh, bolts back here. So the first bolt you wanna loosen is back here, right there, and that's gonna be a six millimeter Allen key, and these two bolts over here is gonna be five millimeter. So all we need to do is just loosen them up, and uh, that way we can uh, untension the belt. So I'm going to show you guys a trick here how to loosen these bolts. These these two bolts here could be pretty hard to loosen uh, and some people actually remove the exhaust to be able to get in there so they can get better leverage on it but all you really need is a six millimeter allen key and one of these guys right here okay so it doesn't matter i'm using a 13 millimeter right now and all we're going to do is basically put the allen key in here all right and we're going to have to loosen it towards the left okay and the way it's pretty hard to get a good grip over here especially with the exhaust and really crank on it but if you put the allen key in here and you put the the wrench key on it like that facing this way you put it on like that that will give you leverage 
to crank on it and you'll be able to loosen it. So let me just show you guys a little bit more clear. So you just put it on like that and that way you can crank on it. And you know, it's pretty hard to get leverage with your hand like that, but if you do it like this, you can crank on it real hard and it'll come off. All right guys, for the next step now, we've loosened up uh, the, two, the, the three bolts back here. And you don't need to remove those bolts, you just gotta get them really loose. And now uh, the next step here is we're going to remove the belt. And in order to remove the belt, you're gonna need a seven millimeter, seven millimeter Allen key. And we're gonna put that way in there, like that. And we're gonna end up uh, removing the belt with that. All right guys, so I'm gonna give you guys another tip and trick here. In order to uh, loosen this bolt in here, uh, it's, it's pretty tight in there and you might not be able to get enough leverage just with your hands again with the Allen key. So what I like to do is call for backup. Here's a nice piece of pipe and we're gonna use this uh, pipe uh, and we're gonna use it for leverage, okay? So I'm just gonna put it in here on the Allen key and now I can use this as leverage and we're gonna actually um, turn this to the left, okay? So um, we're gonna turn this to the left counterclockwise until you see the belt loose, okay? Once it's loose, just keep cranking on it until you get it nice and loose and just work the belt off of it. Take your time, get it nice and loose. So once it's loose, it'll come right off. There it is, the belt is off. All right, so next step now is we're gonna have to remove this bolt in here, okay? We're gonna have to unscrew that. All right guys, so the next step now is to remove this bolt over here and I'm going to show you another trick of how to remove this bolt. So uh, what you're going to need to remove this bolt, you're going to need a 12 millimeter uh, socket here. All right, and here's the trick. In order to remove this, this is going to keep spinning, okay, this, this bolt in here. So we need to block uh, block it from spinning. So what we have to do is get right in here, right by your uh, your uh, coil here, okay? You need to put your Allen key way down in there until you can't spin this anymore. So you'll see it here. See how it stops? You're gonna be turning to the left here, okay? And it won't, it won't be able to spin. If you don't actually put the Allen key down in there, then um, it'll keep spinning. So as you're doing this, it's hard to see, as you're spinning it with your socket, you'll see uh, openings where you can uh, put your Allen key in it, right there. And you just slide your Allen key all the way down until it blocks it from spinning, okay? And then you can remove your um, bolt there with your 12 millimeter, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. And so now, we could start to loosen it up. I've already loosened it, but you see, it's not spinning. But if you don't put that Allen key down there, then basically it's going to keep spinning. So it doesn't uh, create too much force back there. You can put that down there and you'll be able to take it out. So once we take that out, then we'll be able to use the clutch puller to pull off the clutch. So let's do that. So the reason we have to replace the clutches on some units is some of the early units, um, the clutch lining, which you can see in here, okay? The clutch lining was coming undone from the clutch housing, okay? So that was breaking apart and that's what was causing the, the failure of the clutch. But that's, that's uh, this is the part that we're actually replacing over here on, on this unit, okay? So I just want to show you guys that. So I just want to show you guys how the clutch puller tool looks like, okay? That's how it looks like. It's got these three arms, okay? Uh, if, you, if you don't have one of these tools, 
you can rent them out from AutoZone or O'Reilly's. Uh, you can uh, rent them out from there. If they don't have it uh, and you do need one, you can contact your dealer you bought your air conception and see if you can get one or you can contact me at fly high paramotors uh, and uh, at gmail.com and let me know that you need one of these polo tools and I can rent this out to you if you can't find it anywhere else. Uh, make sure when you do rent this out if you do find it to get uh, this allen bolt that comes with it uh, that should come with it at least and uh, it's basically a five millimeter uh, bolt that you'll need for it. So. Uh, really important that you do get that bolt otherwise you won't be able to take it off. What we need to do is remove this bolt and once we remove this bolt we're going to replace that bolt with a allen key type bolt. This is a 8.8 millimeter it says here and we're going to screw that in there and the reason is because it has this hole in it right and uh, we can then attach our clutch to this which it's going to push onto that. You'll see it in a second, it'll make more sense. So we're going to tighten this on over there and, and then we're going to use the clutch puller tool to actually pull it off, okay? So, make sure I can tighten it with a uh, set, it's actually a six millimeter Allen Allen bolt key here. So I'm tying that up over there. Yeah, you don't need a crank on it really, you just need to get it tight enough where it's not gonna, you know, come out. Okay. So now what do we need to do is we're gonna have to use one of these uh, clutch puller tools. And this is the part right here, this uh, sharp part right there is what needs to go into that Allen bolt uh, bolt there. So we're gonna actually just put this on. All right guys, so on the 280, it's a pretty tight fit um, to get the, the, the puller on there. But basically the tight fitness is up here, but I managed to just squeeze it right in there and got a pretty good grip on it. So I thought initially I was gonna have to remove this um, but it looks like I got all the three arms on there securely. Okay, so in order to to uh, pull the clutch off, you got to make sure you do this very evenly. So um, when you install the clutch puller, make sure it's all all on there nice and evenly and you keep coming if it if it gets too tight and it's not coming off and you're just cranking on it then it's you're basically pulling it lopsidedly I'm using a 14 millimeter wrench here and turning it clockwise so I'm tightening it on there which is then pulling it off okay so that's what we got to do here is just keep keep cranking on this until it comes off okay but if you feel that there's something wrong and it's not coming off then it's probably because you're pulling it off unevenly okay so just be careful of how you pull it off. So guys, if, uh, if you end up pulling this off if you, with a clutch puller and you feel like it's not coming off, then the reason it's not coming off is because you're pulling it off uh, unevenly, okay? And you don't want to damage anything here by forcing on it. So if you do, uh, by an accident, pull it unevenly off and you see it won't come off, Use a rubber hammer, hammer it back on place, reset your puller tool, and then pull it off, okay? That's just another tip for you guys, just in case it's not coming off, okay? Hammer it back on there, and then start over, and then pull it back off evenly. Okay, so now I removed the clutch uh, housing right here. Okay, so it's been removed. And the next step is to basically take out this uh, Allen Allen bolt that you use to uh, for the clutch puller. So we're going to take this off. Because we're not going to need that now, we're going to put the regular bolt back in there once we slide on the new clutch. Or actually the new housing. 
So there's two pieces to your clutch. There's the housing and there's the clutch itself. This is going this is the clutch itself and this is your housing, okay? So if you have a failure, it's usually usually either one. It's going to be your housing or your clutch. So I'm going to slide the clutch back on there. Take our new clutch housing and slide that back on there. So for this part you're going to need a rubber hammer and we're going to have to hit it back on there. The whole thing is to just hit it back nice and uh, evenly. Okay guys, another tip for you when you are installing this clutch here, there's going to be a little piece of ring in here, okay, that's on the bow housing. When you tap this, this uh, housing on, you got to make sure to guide that little uh, ring in, in there so you're not hammering it without um, guiding that little ring that's in there. You'll see it on your new housing. Um, I'll show you right here, actually. So you see this little ring right here? Okay, see it? Right there, there's a little ring in there. Okay, you got to you gotta put that up to the center. You see that? So you got to make sure it's centered before you tap it on there. So you got to do it really lightly until you center that ring because this ring is moving, okay? So when when you tap it on there, see the difference? Make sure this is to the center. And once that's to the center, then you can tap it on. So that's just another tip here. So I'm just using a rubber hammer here and very evenly, the important part here is evenly, tap it on there. Okay, and it'll only go so far. There you go. See that? And once it's on there, it's on there. Okay? That's it. Give it a good couple taps and you'll see it's set. And it spins freely. And you're good. So if it's spinning freely, then you're good. So now the next step is to put the bolt back in there that we took out. Okay, I'm just going to put that back on there. So the clutch is now installed, the, the housing is installed. And all we're going to do now is tighten this bolt up. Um, remember, we still have our key that we put back over here. Um, that's going to still hold it. That way we can actually tighten it up. So now, uh, now we're going to go clockwise. We're going to tighten this guy up nice and secure making sure our key is still back there. Okay, you, go, you don't gotta manhandle this, just gotta crank it on there nicely. And that's it. And once it's on there, then now we can put the belt back on there and finish up the process. So again, here I'm using my little tool extender because this is pretty hard to crank on it just with your hand. So I'm using my little extender here and I'm turning it to the left. So left is loosey, right is tidy on this, okay? So we're just turning it like this. Um, and it's only to a certain point. If you go too much, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be good. So once you get it to the right position, we can slide the belt on, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna tighten this belt up. We're gonna put our, our uh, eight millimeter uh, key in here. And we're gonna start tightening it up. And you'll see it. See that? It's getting tight now. How tight? You don't want to have too much flex in it, okay? Um, get it nice and tight on there. So literally when you can only just move it just a couple degrees, then it's nice and tight. There it is. I like that. Hear that sound? It makes that bling bing sound. It's nice and tight on there, okay? You can try to move it. Make sure it's going good. Okay, so the next process now, guys, is to basically to get this tight back on there. So to hold this position, 
we're going to basically um, screw this bolt in and these two bolts in and you're done. So let's do that. So a really important tip here guys again, um, the Allen key that you had back here, don't forget to remove that and try to crank up your motor otherwise you're going to create some serious damage back there. So whatever you put down there to hold it so it doesn't spin, which I use this little, um, what is that, 5 millimeter Allen key, make sure you remove that before, uh, before you do anything else, okay? okay? So there it is, I've installed the propeller, just do a cross pattern tightening on it, uh, get it nice and tight, and that's how easy it is to basically replace that clutch. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, it's not a really hard process to, to replace this, as you can see. Uh, you just need some simple tools, and it's not that hard to replace. I definitely think, in my opinion, for that ever instance that you actually need to replace one of these clutches, it's worth to have a clutch, uh, because it's not that hard to replace if you need, do need to service it, and it gives so much benefits. Smoother motor, um, smoother idling, okay? Uh, if you fall back, the prop isn't spinning. There's so much benefits of having that clutch, okay? So it's not that hard to do. Uh, I definitely recommend getting a clutch motor. Uh, I never will fly one without a clutch, clutch on there. It's just so much nicer to motor when it's on there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this how-to video. Stay tuned for more how-to videos. Uh, and just keep checking our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm an authorized dealer for Air Conception. So if you'd like to order an air conception paramotor or if you have any questions, you need any assistance, just give me a call and I'm more than happy to help you. Visit the website at flyhighparamotors.com for my full contact info. And uh, stay tuned for more videos and I'll have some more uh, cool videos for you guys soon. Take care. Robert, signing out.